We have a working Restify API. We already have unit tests that have reduced our surface area. We've managed to ensure that the actual API calls, these guys are on the fringe of the code base. The IO is as far as possible away. The only integration tests we really have to write are for sending data and getting specific data back. The rest of this is blasted with the unit tests up to about 70% coverage. So that's pretty good good enough. Our unit tests here have everything as normal. There's nothing really changed from what we've looked at in the past, except for Restify itself as a middleware provides a client. Not only do they provide a server, but they provide a variety of clients that you can use to query APIs. We're going to use the JSON one because Restify, the middleware for Node, is mainly for creating JSON APIs. It defaults to JSON. So the JSON client is a natural way to unit test it. If your middleware doesn't have that, or you've never even written this API, it's actually some other API that you're writing unit tests for because you're so sick of the technical debt, then take a look at SuperTest, which allows you to unit test without and make some assertions on some of the data that you get back as well as headers, things like that. Another thing that's kind of cool with SuperTest is you also get SuperTest as promised, very similar to Chai's promised, making assertions on promises as well and the data that comes back with some other options such as delay. Another option too is just basic node request. So if you wanna build your own assertions around that, request is a wonderful way to do HTTP request and node, they support callbacks, and there's some things that do promises and streams as well. And they have some pretty sophisticated sign-on stuff. So if you're doing a tricky OAuth and a lot of the SSL stuff, which is always a pain, they have that as well. We're gonna use basic chai as promised. Our server is smart enough that if you run it with Node, it knows that you ran it with the Node command and it will start the server. Otherwise, if you require it, you have to call the server yourself. Wonderful for us is that this method here is wrapped to the promise. So it initializes the Restify server, sets up the query parser, and creates our two routes. In this case, the ping, which says, yo dog, I'm there, and data, which actually does the real work. These are the kind of APIs that do the database calls and stuff. So you're not really interested in testing that first. You just want to verify, does my code even talk to a running server? The last thing this does is listen on port 8080, which is hard coded. And at this point, we know that this promise wrapper is done. So we call success with the actual live connected server variable. In our integration test, set this up. You have to first import it. So let's import our start server from our index. We will describe just like we do in normal unit test, except the only difference between this one is the integration test name. So say index integration. So if we see it in the console, we can tell the difference between this and regular unit tests. We need three variables to get this thing moving. We need server and the unfortunately are mutable because we're gonna create it and turn it off. This is not a serverless architecture. Cry me a river. So get Clients, which is our JSON client, we're gonna make calls on our server. Get URL is gonna be a method partial that saves us some typing. So before is a keyword to run before all unit tests, not before each, but actually before the entire suite of unit tests. We need to set up the server one time, all unit tests will test it, and then at the end we'll shut it down and clean up our mess. The first thing we need is, we gotta make this asynchronous because this is gonna take a while. Restify has a factory function for create JSON client. Only requires really one configuration parameter, and that is where is your server running from? Thankfully, we can create servers locally nowadays pretty quickly. So we just give it a URL of local host. If you're testing some other server somewhere else, you could create this URL to be some known URL that's externally. Start server is a promise. So we wait for the then. The result, as you and I know, is going to be the server. So we'll set the server to whatever it gives us, already connected, ready to go. We'll call done without any parameters to let Mocha know we are ready to run our unit tests. And just to be uber clear and careful, we'll forward all errors that happen to happen within the server setup to the done so Mocha is aware that the whole suite failed. When we are done, the good news is that this part is synchronous. We're going to clean up our mess. And the client close. So our JSON client, we no longer need it to be connected to the interwebs. And our server closed. No longer need to be listening on port 80 to satisfy HTTP request. NPM run integration just to verify that our server setup is too legit to quit. It is. No errors. Good to go. No unit tests were run because we have no its. So let's go ahead and write one. We have to do some setup work. Let's describe just our API ping first, since it's the simplest thing. That just you hit a URL and it gives you back an object with result of true and data of ping. It should respond. So if we call it, it should respond, assuming everything in here is set up the server correctly. Now, using client, we can do a callback. But callbacks are lame sauce. They don't deal with the whole concept of pure functions. And while they require significantly more typing using promises than callbacks, from a testing perspective, we can guarantee they always return a value of true or false. Now to get a URL, we're gonna wrap it here. And there are libraries that make this so much simpler, but 
I'm going to do it raw so you guys know how to do it. It takes two things. Take the client, takes the URL. We're going to call it git for now. The, the method name is actually git. Not to be confused with lodash git. All this does is wrap a callback with a promise. Instead of callbacks returning nothing, in this case, you can return a promise. And when the callback's done, it'll call your then. If the callback blows up and has an error, it'll call your failure. Say client get past the URL. You get a variety of parameters back error if anything went wrong. The request used to actually make the call. The response, raw response data if you want to parse that. And always an object that's never null or undefined. They did that on purpose. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad. I'll leave that for you to debate. If there's an error, we're going to get go ahead and return a failure. The return value doesn't make any difference. Nobody cares about the return. It's really just to stop the code execution so no code below this runs. All we care about is calling failure and passing the error. If it doesn't fail, then we will call success with the object that we received from the server and let the unit test assert if this is legit or not. Our job is merely to convert a callback into a promise. That's all it does. When we call git, here's the problem. Where do we get our client from? <laughs> so the client is a stateful variable, unfortunately, and is created before. So in theory, we could put this on the right and give it a default value of client. But do we really want to put a method closure inside here every time, like just for that? That's ridiculous. So instead of using a default parameter for the client, we are going to use something called a method partial. That is a function that already has some of its parameters already set for you. You just have to fill in the rest. It gives you a function back. And if you want to create the method partial here with that client inside, you could do that. Go on git URL and use lodash's partial function. We say git and always provide the first parameter of client that we just made. Now we can call git URL without worrying about the client. It's already supplied for us and just provide the route or the URL. API ping, again, this route is the exact same for the ping route that we've already defined. The actual JSON API handles the URL for you, so you should get to go on that aspect. Should respond if we return a promise of git URL and we ping that with the JSON client, we should get some JSON back. It should eventually be fulfilled. Our then should fire, everyone should be happy. If our server is set up correctly and running, we should be good. So run our integration test. You can see our RESTify server starts listening. We call our git API ping and it successfully responds. That's great, but did it send us the correct data or is that just like this library claiming that everything worked? Let's start asserting some data. So we should say, should get a pong back. If we call ping, we should get pong, ping pong. Give us an act and an acknowledgement. So now we'll assert on the data. We'll say get URL API ping should eventually, now we'll do with the data, have a property that object we get back, which if you don't remember, it's a maybe, right? It's a result of true and a data of Pong, if you're curious what the data looks like, should have a property of data that equals Pong. Rerun our test, voila, we can now hit an API, verify that it does in fact respond, and we get a Pong back, and our tests clean up their mess afterwards. So a lot of setup to get this to work. This is why integration tests are annoying, and only two tests 118 milliseconds. So you can see as these grow, they become significantly longer. This is why you want your unit test to cover as much as possible from a code coverage perspective. So you can reduce this early on, attack the problem head on. Ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you set up a local server, or you can skip this if you're testing a known server and just create your client. Start testing routes in an asynchronous fashion to verify that they really do send back the data you're working with. A true integration test.